All right, today in Algebra 2, we're going to start Section 5.4, <clears throat> which is solving radical equations. Let's first start with <clears throat> solving equations with one radical. So our goal is to get that radical all by itself. So isolate that radical on a side all by itself. So number one, it says the square root of x plus 5, all of that minus 1 equals 3. So if I wanted to get the radical all by itself, the very first thing I would do is add 1 to both sides. So then I have the square root of x plus 5 equals 4. Now I need to get rid of the square root. Remember, the opposite of taking the square root of something is squaring it. So square root and squaring undo each other. So whatever I do to one side, I have to do the other side. So since I squared the square roots, on this side I just have x plus 5 equals over here 4 squared, 16. Now it's a basic algebra equation, so subtract 5, so I get x equals 11. <clears throat> we can check our answer by either substitution or graphing. So we'll do substitution first, because that's the easiest. So if I check by substitution, that just means plug 11 into the problem. So the original problem is the square root of x, so instead of x, I'm going to put 11 plus 5, all of that minus 1, does it equal 3? So underneath my radical, 11 plus 5 is 16, minus 1 equals 3. The square root of 16 is 4. 4 minus 1 equals 3. Well, 4 minus 1 is 3, so I get <clears throat> 3 equals 3. Yes, it checks out. So now if I want to graph, okay, so remember this is what I'm graphing. y equals the square root of x plus 5, all of that minus 1, and then y equals 3. The y equals 3, that's an easy one. We know that that's going to be the horizontal line through y equals 3. So there's y equals 3. y equals the square root of x plus 5, all of that minus 1. I can, it's a square root, so if I look at my parent, the square root of x, right, my xy table, I'm at 0, 1, 4, and 9, so 0, 1, 2, and 3. So then my new xy table, this comes out as x minus 5. This is going to be y minus 1. So 0 minus 5 puts me at negative 5, negative 4, negative 1, 4. Let's see, y minus 1, so 0 minus 1, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I'm looking for x equals 11. So I don't have that over here yet. So if I go back to my parent and I plug in, let's see, the next perfect square I know is 16. The square of 16 is 4. 16 minus 5 gets me 11. 4 minus 1 gets me 3. Okay. So plot these points. So negative 5, negative 1. Negative 4, 0. Negative 1, 1. 4, 2. 11, 3, right there. So there's that graph. It crosses at x equals 11, y equals 3. So at the point, 11, 3 is where the two graphs cross. So we just checked our answer. Okay. All right, so let's try some more of those where we won't be graphing or um, to check them. So number two, the square root of x minus 2, all of that plus 3 equals 5. Again, our goal is to isolate that radical. So to get the radical by itself, I need to move 3 over. So subtract 3 from both sides. So then I have the square root of x minus 2 equals 2. Now I need to get rid of the radical. It's a square root, so opposite of square root is square. Square both sides. So I get x minus 2 equals 4. Add 2 to both sides, I get x equals 6. I can check my answer by substituting it back in. That's the easiest way. So if I check by substituting, so I'm going to check it. So I get the square root of 6 minus 2, all of that plus 3 equals 5. The square root of 6 minus 2, that's the square root of 4, plus 3 equals 5. The square root of 4 is 2. Does 2 plus 3 equal 5? Yes. So I know that I'm good. Number 3. So I have the cube root of x minus 1, all of that equals 2. The radical has already been isolated, so I need to get rid of the cube root. So the opposite of the cube root is cube. So here I'm going to cube both sides. 
So I have x minus 1 equals 2 cubed, 8. Add 1, I get x equals 9. Again, I'm going to come over here and check by plugging it in. So the cube root of 9 minus 1, does that equal 2? The cube root of 9 minus 1 is 8. Does the cube root of 8 equal 2? Yes, it does. Number 4. 5 times the fourth root of x minus 2, all of that minus 7 equals 73. So here I have several things to do to get the radical all by itself. The very first thing we're going to do is add 7 to both sides. So now I have 5 times the fourth root of x minus 2 equals 80. Now I have 5 times the radical. I'm trying to get the radical by itself, so divide everything by 5. So I get the fourth root of x minus 2 equals 80 divided by 5. Move that back up. Thank you. So 80 divided by 5 is equal to 16. I need to get rid of the fourth root, so I'm going to take the fourth, raise both sides to the fourth power. So then on this side, I'm left with x minus 2. 16 to the fourth power, that is 65,536. Add 2 to both sides, so I get x equals 65,538. I've got a huge number this time. I can plug it back in to check. 5 times the fourth root of 65,538 minus 2, all of that minus 7 equals 73. So I have 5 times the fourth root of 65,536, that minus 7 equals 73. The fourth root of 65,536 is 16. So I have 5 times 16 minus 7 equals 73. 5 times 16 is 7, or sorry, is 80. 80 minus 7 equals 73? Yes, it does. So I know that I'm good. All right, so that is solving equations with one radical. Your goal is to isolate the radical and then undo that radical, okay? and then we can check our answers. All right, so let's look at the back of this. So now we're going to talk about um, applications or rewriting a formula. So here they tell me that the suspension cables from the Golden Gate Bridges towers are farther above the roadway near the towers and closer to the roadway near the middle of the bridge. You can figure out your distance from the middle of the bridge, x, in feet, and the height of the suspension cable, y, in feet, at your position by using the equation x equals the square root of y minus 220, all that divided by 0 0.010583. So it says about how far is the cable from the roadway when you are 200 feet from the middle of the bridge, okay? So they want the cable of the roadway, okay? How far is the cable from the roadway? Um, they want us to know um, what is y when we are 220, when we are 200 feet. So when this equals 200, it would be easier to solve to get the y all by itself first. So that's the very first thing we're going to do is solve for y. So we have x equals the square root of y minus 220, everything over 0 0.010583. We're going to solve this equation to get y by itself. Again, I have y underneath the radical, so the very first thing I want to do is isolate that radical. I need to, let me make that look a little bit better, so it's just that. I need to get rid of my denominator, so I'm going to multiply everything by 0 0.010583. So that gets me 0 0.010583x equals the square root of y minus 220. So now I've isolated my radical. I need to get rid of the radical. It's a square root, so the opposite of square root, square both sides. So on this side, when I do that, I get 0 0.000111 999x squared equals y minus 220. Add 220 to both sides. 
So then I get 220 plus 0.00011199x squared, and that's what is equal to y. So now I need to plug 200 in for x. So now we're going to plug x equals 200 and solve because that's what they asked us for. So 220 plus 0.00055999 times 200 squared is going to equal my y. And when we work all of that out, we get y is approximately 224.8 feet. So I could say the cable is approximately 225 feet above the roadway. When you are 200 feet from the middle of bridge. So we answer, answered the question that they have asked. It's, let's look at another one of those. So number two, it says the speed V of a vehicle in relation to its stopping distance D is represented by the equation V equals 3.57 square roots of D. What is the equation for the stopping distance in terms of the vehicle speed? So they want me to solve for D. That's what they're asking. Solve for D. So V equals 3.57 square roots of D. We want to get B D by itself. Let's say B. So it's being multiplied by 3.57, right? that radical. So I want to divide everything by 3.57. So then I have V divided by 3.57 equals the square root of D. I'm trying to get rid of the radicals, square roots, to so square both sides. So on this side, I have V squared. 3.57 squared gives me 12.7449 equals B. That's all that they asked. They didn't ask me to plug anything in solve anything further they just asked me to solve in terms of d mm -hmm. all right now we're going to talk about identifying extraneous solutions we've talked about extraneous solutions before in this class remember that extraneous solutions are solutions that when i plug them back into the original equation they do not work they give me a false statement so they are extra or extraneous mm -hmm. So it says, recall an extraneous solution is a solution derived from the equation, original equation, but it is not a solution to the original equation. So we're going to solve and check for extraneous solutions. So if we look at number one, the square root of 3x minus 2, all of that equals x minus 4. The radical has already been isolated, so I need to get rid of it. It's a square root, so square both sides. So now I have... 3x minus 2 equals, on this side, I have x minus 4 quantity squared. I'm going to go ahead and use my shortcut instead of foiling out. So the shortcut says the very first term squared, x squared. Multiply the two together and double them. So negative 4x double gives me negative 8x. And then the last term squared, negative 4 squared plus 16. I have x squared and x's, so I want to get everything on the same side. So I'm going to subtract 3x and add 2 over so then I have x squared minus 11x plus 18 equals 0. This is what I want to solve. I'm always going to check to see if it will factor before I do anything else because I prefer to factor. So I'm looking for what can I multiply together to get 18, but add to get negative 11. Okay, so what can we multiply together to get positive 18, but add to get negative 11? That's going to give me a negative 9 and a negative 2, right? So minus 9 minus 2. So then I get x equals 9, x equals 2. So now I need to check both of them, right? I do that by plugging them back into the original equation. So the original equation said the square root of 3 times 9 minus 2 equals x, so 9 minus 4. So here, 9 times 3 is 27. 27 minus 2 is 25. Does that equal 9 minus 
or 5? Does the square root of 25 equal 5? Yes. So I know x equals 9 works. So now I'm going to plug in 2. So the square root of 3 times 2 minus 2, does that equal 2 minus 4? So to get the square root of 6 minus 2, 4, does that equal negative 2? And I have a square root equal to a negative no, 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 right? I would need it to say positive or negative square root of 4 in order to get a negative 2, right? Therefore, x equals 2 is extraneous. So my only real answer is x equals 9, okay? So now here is just talks about why does the extraneous solution arise? Okay. So we can discover where does the extraneous solution come from. If we graph the first two equations, then graph the equation after you square both sides, do we get equivalent equations? Okay. So the very first one, okay, if we graph y equals x minus 4. That's just a straight line, right? So y intercept negative 4, slope of 1. So that is this nice diagonal line. Y equals x minus 4. Okay. And then if I graph y equals the square root of 3x minus 2. And if I look at my parent, the square root of x. I'm looking at 0, 1, 4, and 9. 0, 1, 2, and 3. So then my new one, I can pull a 3 out here, right, and make this x minus 2 thirds. So this becomes x plus 2 thirds, and then this is going to be the square root of 3 times y. So 0 plus 2 thirds, I get 2 thirds. 1 and 2 thirds, 4 and 2 thirds, 9 and 2 thirds. This is 0. This is 1 times square root of 3, this square root of 3, 2 square roots of 3, 3 square roots of 3. Okay. So if I plot these, so I'm at 2 thirds and 0, so 2 thirds and 0. 1 and 2 thirds, the square root of 3. So over 1 and 2 thirds, square root of 3 over 4 and 2 thirds up to parts of 3 let me see basically this is our equation So here we would have, let's see, this is, uh, we said when x was equal to 9. So let me erase that, make that look a little bit better so that we can see that. So this was our, when x is 9, right? so if I plug 9 in here, right? 3 times 9 is 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, sorry, if I plugged 9 in here, 3 times 9 is 27, 27 minus 2 is 25, square root of 25 is 5, so over 9, up 5, right there. So that's what the very first if we graph the very first two, that's what they look like. So now, after we have squared both sides, okay, so after we squared both sides, we get the y equals 3x minus 2. So now that's the line, y equals 3x minus 2. So if I look at that one, I have a y-intercept at negative 2, a slope of 3. So up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. 3 over 1, or down 3 over 1. So this is my equation, or sorry, my line. 
And then the other one, once I squared it, I got x squared minus 8x plus 16. Which is x minus 4 quantity squared, which means I have a vertex at 4 comma 0. So it's a problem. Well, my vertex is at 4, 0. If I plug in 2, so x equals 2, 2 minus 4 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4. So if I plug in 2, I'm at 4. If I plug in 9, right, I'm checking these answers that we got up here. If I plug in 9, 9 minus 4 is 5, 5 squared is 25. So it's going to be like way off my graph up here. So, and I see that I don't have the same equations, right? My, what I'm graphing are not equivalent equations. That's why this x equals two is an extraneous solution because this is not related to this first equation. They're not equivalent equations. So that's just an idea to show you why it's an extraneous solution, why it works. It works after we square it, but once we square it, it'll really not equal equivalent equations. All right, so now let's just get back to solving and checking for our solutions. So we have x equals the square root of 7x plus 8. Again, the radical is isolated, so get rid of it. Square both sides. So I have x squared equals 7x plus 8. Get everything on the same side. x squared minus 7x minus 8 equals 0. Again, I'll try to factor. Or can I multiply together to get negative 8, but add to get negative 7? So that's going to give me a negative 8 and a positive 1. So here I get x equals 8. Here I get x equals negative 1. Play them in the check. We always are checking these. So 8, does that equal the square root of 7 times 8, 56 plus 8? 56 plus 8 is 64. So yes, that works. So x equals 8 works. Like a negative 1. Negative 1 equals the square root of negative 7 plus 8. Can the square root equal a negative number? No. That's extraneous. Hmm? Alright, let's do one more of these and then we'll stop for the day. So x plus 2 equals the square root of x plus 2. Again, square both sides to get rid of that radical. I'm going to use the shortcut again, so I get x squared plus 2x doubled is 4x. 2 squared 4 equals x plus 2. Get everything on the same side. So I get x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0. See if I can factor. What can I multiply together to get 2, but I had to get 3. That's plus 2 plus 1. So I get x equals negative 2, x equals negative 1. I need to check those answers. So plug them in. So negative 2 plus 2, does that equal the square root of negative 2 plus 2? So I get 0 equals the square root of 0. Yes, that one works, right? So x equals negative 2 works. Now plug, check negative 1. Negative 1 plus 2 equals the square root of negative 1 plus 2. So I get 1 equals the square root of 1. Yes, that works. So here they both worked, and I did not have any extraneous solutions. All right, so that's going to be day one of section 5.4, solving radical equations. Your homework is going to be the um, Envision 5.4 worksheet. You're going to do numbers 21 through 32, making sure to check for extraneous solutions and check all of your answers. Tomorrow we will continue on in the same section 5.4. Four.